Hey up! Welcome back to the channel. Now, a few videos back I conducted a review of the Kawasaki W800 motorcycle. Now, uh, that wasn't meant in any way to be a comparison video with the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, uh, upon which I am now perched. It was meant as a standalone review. Now, uh, a grand bike, very nice bike indeed. But on the back of that video, there were two or three comments which basically went like this. The Kawasaki W800 is far and away a better quality motorcycle than the Royal Enfield 650 and its components are built to a far higher standard than the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 and the fit and finish of the Kawasaki W800 is far better than that of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 and uh, not only comments to that effect in relation to the Kawasaki but also in relation to Triumph's own range of modern classic motorcycles. So today we're going to consider exactly what constitutes quality because uh, I would submit that it's an entirely subjective concept. Back in the 1970s there was a fantastic book written by a chap called Robert Persig uh, and that book was called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. It's one of the best books that I've ever ever read and uh, in that book uh, Persig covers a number of philosophical areas that he tries very hard to address what quality actually means and what values and thoughts underpin quality. And uh, I think it's fair to say that even he, with his massive intellect, struggled a little. But what Percy basically did was, uh, he said that uh, there were two kinds of people in the world. Those that thought romantically and those that thought classically. And those that think romantically, in terms of motorcycles for example, are those people, and there's a bit of this of all, in all of us isn't there, are those people that look at a bike and be immediately impressed by and primarily concerned with its appearance, its style, its form, its aesthetics. And then there will be the more, shall we say, mechanically minded people who would have the, as Persig would have it, the classical way of thinking, which was more about function and utility and nuts and bolts and how things come together to perform a function. And somewhere in between those two concepts of form and aesthetics and of function and utility sits ergonomics. And ergonomics is about how the one concept finds expression in the other. But let's our, apply our minds today to, uh, to matters of quality and uh, specifically on this Royal Enfield 650 with some of the component parts that people draw attention to when being, I think, very unfairly critical of the fit and finish. So let's crack on and take a look. So first off then, and uh, of all the issues on the Royal Enfield model, the, uh, the one thing that I suppose disappoints me the most is this headlamp casing here. Now this is the um, chrome colourway which is the most expensive of the colourways uh, and so perhaps it's understandable that this uh, headlight bowl here, the assembly at the back, uh, is chrome rather than painted any other colour such as black or a matching red. Um, but that said the chrome finish is uh, somewhat below par. Uh, and I think the cost that would have been incurred in bringing this right up to standard, say even so that it matched the quality of the uh, headlight bezel here, uh, that that would have been a, neg a negligible cost in terms of the, uh, the overall uh, final retail price of the motorcycle. So just a little bit disappointing really that this part of the he headlamp assembly 
has a, a less than premium chrome finish and it's quite obvious now that's that said this can be easily remedied can't it uh, i would guess that for around the hundred pound mark you could actually have this either re-chromed or, or painted um, to a high standard or powder coated uh, with a color of your choice but just a little bit uh, irksome that something so easily rectified uh, has been allowed to get through quality control Right, so and while we're around the area of the headlight, we can turn our attention to these headlight brackets. Um, they are perfectly functional. So in terms of function and utility, 100%, no problem whatsoever. However, if we think romantically in terms of form and aesthetics, they're uh, probably not right up there with the finest works of art. That said, uh, not a difficult job to replace these. There are a number of aftermarket options from uh, places like Hitchcock's Motorcycles and from Tech Bike Parts where you can find these either powder coated in black or uh, in chrome or polished stainless steel. So uh, yeah, functionally absolutely up to the job. Aesthetically, not exactly a work of art, but easily remedied with aftermarket parts, which uh, are not all that expensive, to be fair. Okay, so let's turn our attention to the indicators. They're exactly the same at the front as they are at the back of the, this interceptor. Um, they are a plastic cased unit with an orange lens, a standard white bulb inside, and with a chrome effect finish. And uh, they don't look at all out of place on the bike. And in terms of the classical point of view, uh, which would be their uh, utility and their function, absolutely fine, no issues whatsoever. And uh, don't look uh, out of place on the bike at all. Uh, if you're after something with a more premium finish, then there are a number of alternatives available from the likes of Tech Bike Parts and uh, Hitchcock's Motorcycles and uh, other aftermarket suppliers for that matter. So again, another part which can be very easily upgraded for very little outlay uh, in, in terms of your hard earned cash. Right then, so brake and clutch levers. And uh, as you can see here, I've upgraded the original parts with CNC alloy levers from Tech Bike Parts. The originals, which you can see here, are fairly basic in nature. They're not span adjustable. And uh, again, they are indicative of the bike being built to a price. Perfectly functional, perfectly adequate for the task in hand. Um, but at uh, from an aesthetic point of view, uh, I'm sure you'll agree that um, the uh, CNC alloy upgrades that are available um, represent uh, a much more pleasing to the eye piece of kit. Okay, so let's talk mudguards. Well, the OEM mudguards on this interceptor are plastic, black plastic in this case. And uh, to my mind, they look absolutely fine and you wouldn't immediately cast your eyes over the bike and think that these represented a very obvious driving down of prices in the manufacturing process. However, if you're after that more premium look, then again, there are a number of alternatives available. So with this bike, I'll be upgrading the mudguards in due course and fitting the polished stainless steel mudguards front and rear available from Hitchcock's Motorcycles together with the uh, upgraded front mudguard mounting bracket from Enfield Precision. And I think uh, that uh, will certainly give a much more premium look to the bike. But I go back to what I said uh, at the beginning, that, uh, that these mudguards in and of themselves don't represent an obvious pricing down uh, in, in terms of the, uh, the quality of the fit and finish of the bike overall.
So let's talk oil cooler guards. Uh, this is the original part. It's uh, made of a, a thin gauge metal which has uh, just been spray painted gloss black. Does the job, uh, doesn't feel too premium in terms of quality and doesn't feel that robust. So uh, I've actually upgraded to the Enfield Precision Stainless Steel Oil Cooler Guard, again from Hitchcock's. But again, if you were to look over the bike in the showroom, always assuming of course that it hadn't been modified in any way, I think one of the items that you would cast your eye to as uh, an indication of the bike being built to a price would be things like this Oil Cooler Guard here but again a very very straightforward upgrade okay so let's talk about switch gear here on the right hand side you have the standard layout with the kill switch and the starter and on the left hand side again the standard layout for the headlight indicators and horn uh, all very utilitarian in appearance um, entirely up to the job at hand but you could be forgiven on closer inspection for perhaps thinking that they're not the highest quality injection molded construction that said there are aftermarket options available uh, a lot of them in CNC alloy so if you were minded to upgrade this part of the bike there are plenty of options out there for you Okay, so let's talk seats. This is the original seat that uh, comes with the Royal Enfield Interceptor. And uh, as you can probably see, the stitching pattern is just in fact embossed into the PVC covering. It's perfectly uh, functional, perfectly adequate, but I have to say for me, after about uh, 45 minutes in the saddle, it gets very uncomfortable indeed. And uh, it doesn't to be fair, look a premium product. And to my mind, as an OEM part, doesn't really do the bike any justice. However, the uh, Royal Enfield touring seat, which you can see I have fitted here, is available at a very modest price, uh, around about £130 all in these. Uh, and as you can see, a much better sculpted, much better put together uh, piece of kit. So again, a very straightforward and affordable upgrade to the bike. Right, okay, so uh, let's turn our attention to the rear of the bike and just a couple of things here really I think that stand out. Uh, you may be, well be able to see that I've replaced the standard grab rail at the back with this chrome finish rack. Again from Hitchcock's motorcycles. Uh, the original part is this part here which is basically a painted standard tubular grab rail at the back. Uh, it's not very pretty, it does the job, it's a rail and the pillion if you have one can grab it. Um, but it doesn't look particularly premium. So uh, a very very straightforward upgrade. There are a number of options available both in chrome and in black whether additional grab rails or uh, rack options. And the other thing I think finally for this particular video again at the back is the rear light. Again a very bog standard red perspex tail and brake light assembly. The indicators again are exactly the same as at the front uh, and again with um, options for upgrades available from the likes of Tech and Hitchcock's. Likewise, the rear tail light, there is um, a replacement option in both black and chrome uh, available from Tech Bike Parts, and uh, I'll be fitting those parts in due course. So, uh, I think in terms of the individual parts, which to my mind stand out on first inspection as being built to a price point, that will be it for the time being. There are, of course, other parts of the bike that you may look at for example the suspension and think well that's well and truly worthy of an upgrade but that wasn't really the point of today's video so let's sum up so i hope that was of some interest to you if it was please leave a like please click subscribe and uh, i'll see you on the next one
and in the meantime I leave you with the beating heart of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650.